Okay, I'd like to call to order the Village of Lake Bluff Sustainability and Community Enhancement Ad Hoc Committee meeting, regular meeting for Tuesday, October Recording in progress. <laughs> for Tuesday, October 15th. All right. Uh, roll call. Roll call. Uh, mem Member Busio? Present. Member Cole? Here. Member Hans? Here. Uh, Member Twitchell is absent. And Chair Renner? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Um, next up is considerations of the September 17th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Does anyone have any comments, additions, edits? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Um, roll call or all in favor? Uh, voice vote. Voice vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, next up uh, on the agenda, we allow 15 minutes for uh, anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on an uh, issue not on the agenda tonight. Uh, is anyone here wants to speak on anything not on the agenda? Okay. Do we have anyone on the line? Uh, we do not. Okay. All right. Um, I guess uh, take it away for the general business. All right. Uh, so the first uh, agenda item under a general business is an informational report on the Oriole Grove Clearing Project. So located between the Skokie River Prairie and uh, Lafola Skokie River Nature Preserve, Oriole Grove is an 86-acre Lake County Forest Preserve District that offers activities, amenities, and natural assets. And the Lake County Forest Preserve District uh, approved a master plan of the Oriole Grove in 2021. We have uh, Dan Sanchez here this evening, who is a restoration ecologist of the Lake County Forest Preserve District and the site ecologist of Oriole Grove, who will be here to give a presentation on the progress that's been made and answer any questions that the SEC may have. So if you'd like to step on up, I can uh, display your presentation. All right, well, thank you very much, Lauren, and thank you for inviting me to join and talk about Oriole Grove. Um, so my name is Dan Sandash, and I am the restoration ecologist that has been with the district for about two years now. And the site ecologist at Oriole Grove means that I am the point person for all things natural resources at Oriole Grove, and I'm the site ecologist of 12 sites in total. So this is one of many preserves that I get to love and take care of. And Really anything prescribed burning, why we do clearing projects like this, I'm the person, so I'm glad I'm here to join you to talk about it. So I was specifically invited to talk about the clearing project that we initiated this past winter at Oriole Grove. Um, and next slide, please. And so I wanted to give you a little more context of history and all the work that's been going on before we dive into the project. So if you're not familiar, Oriole Grove, 86 acres, it was originally the Kelly estate from the family, which was designed by landscape architect Jens Jensen in about 1901 or the early 1900s. And the site itself we acquired in 1980 with the Illinois Department of Transportation, and then the district fully gained full ownership of this property in 2019. And so this acquisition was, I would say, a really important one for the area because it preserved the core of the Skokie River Corridor. So our neighbors to the north, Lake Forest, or Lake Forest open lands and Lake Bluff open lands, we were able to preserve this nice core to have a really long continuous habitat, which is really critical for our plants and animals. Uh, next slide, please. And the progress that we've made thus far, really, we have to thank our volunteers. We've had a few clearing projects with contractors, but our volunteers have really been leading the way. And here's one example of a Lake Forest High School group doing a work day clearing buckthorn in some of our woodlands. And next slide, please. We have one very special volunteer to thank. And I'm so happy he's here. So Dave, thank you so much for all your continued dedication to the forest preserves and specifically Oriole Grove. But as a site steward, Dave has been volunteering with us for 25 years now. And the dedication and love that he has for Oriole Grove is really fantastic. But it is also really critical to have the fine tune be my eyes and ears on the ground because I can't be at Oriole Grove all the time. And so with Dave's help and our other ecologists making sure that we're doing what's best for Oriole Grove, it is really critical. And it's one of the reasons right. why Oriole Grove ha has made such fantastic progress yeah. thus far. Hey Dan, just yeah. for, um, could you give me, a, I mean, I'm not exactly clear on where this is. Could you orient me on the map of like, 
the where clearing it project itself? The 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 Grove itself. Ah. Yeah. So yeah, let's pick up a few slides, some, please. This is one seventy six right here. Okay. Yeah, right and here. This goes, um, yeah. So right along school. there, the bike path is right along the, the bike west path side. Is here. Yeah. yeah. And then the railroad tracks are account for that weird curvature okay. on the east side. And then so, you, you know the roads better than I do in this yeah. area. So yeah. <laughs> okay, this is forty one right here. This is like where Mariani and then the dumps over here. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. this is like the Skokie Preserve, and then it goes behind the Skokie Preserve. Okay, mm -hmm. and the golf course is in back. Like, golf course is like over, over here. here. Yeah. Okay. Right. Does that help? Be probably like right awesome. here across Thank you. across one seventy six. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Thanks. All yeah. right. So all right. Thank you, Dave. Again, we can jump ahead to the next slide. So the clearing project. So you'll. You've all seen the master plan, and our goal is basically to, from what well, my goal in this project, is to complete the initial restoration of Oil Grove. So we've had a couple of contracted projects, and as I said, volunteers have really done the bulk of the work thus far, but there's a lot more to do in terms of initial restoration, and primarily that means areas that are invaded by common buckthorn, which is the worst invader in the county. It's something like 40% of our canopy cover in Lake County, which oh is the worst in Illinois, unfortunately. <laughs> So we are on the hunt to eradicate buckthorn. And one of the ways that we do this is using our in-house forestry model. And so in areas where we elect to use this are areas where in times of the year when we know it won't be too wet and it won't do a ton of damage to the soil. And if we do it this way, we can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. So this project is about seven acres that we were able to clear this past winter. But the trade-off is that it's gonna look not nice for a little bit. And so I'm sure you've heard people talk about that, but that's the trade-off. We get a lot of ground cover for all the shards to exist for a little bit. So for about two years, it's gonna look like this, but over time, all of those shards of invasive species will decompose and the native plants will fill in as we continue the restoration process. All right, and as Dave can attest, like the hand clearing, it is much more manicured, but it takes a lot more time and effort. So that's the trade-off there. All right, next slide, please. And so the clearing project, seven acres, as I said, and on the map I have for you, it's that red area where you can take a look on the PowerPoint. And so, as I said, our primary goals were just to continue advancing that initial restoration in the context of the master plan. And the invasive species control, buckthorn was the primary target, but anything else, honeysuckle, um, bittersweet is a vine that just gets completely gnarled. That one's a bad one. And in addition to just the invasive species control, we have to think about the function of the habitat as, as a whole. And so these areas are supposed to be more oak woodlands. And in those areas, we need just a kind of a Goldilocks amount of sunlight. Not too much, not too little. And with buckthorn being so prevalent, we were in a scenario there, where there was not enough sunlight reaching the forest floor for our for our woodland wildflowers. And so I'm one of our botanists, so that's what I care about mostly, but making sure the habitat is open for other birds and other wildlife is really critical too. So for example, some of our woodpeckers, they won't fly or hunt for, for, for insects in areas where it's too thick. So they need a lot of room to do that hunting behavior and swoop through the woodlands. So that's just one of my favorite examples, but we really need to make sure that this place works for our native plants and animals and buckthorn just isn't cutting it. All right, and kind of within that is promoting native plant growth, but we, we're also going to be doing that a lot more intentionally by those clearing efforts and selecting what to remove and what to keep. All right, next slide, please. Ah, and why did we start with those seven acres that we did? To open up the Jensen Pond. And so if you're not familiar with the Jensen Pond, he, one of his key features was introducing a kidney-shaped pond in some of his landscape designs. And his goal with this design was so you can't see the entire pond from any one perspective to make the landscape look larger than it actually is. So I, I think the view is beautiful. I took this picture last week as we got our fall color starting, mm -hmm. and I think this was the move. And you'll also notice in our master plan, we have planned some sort of outlook overlooking the pond, and I really can't wait to see what that manifests as. All right, next slide, please. All right, so we've done the clearing. We've done the clearing in-house with our forestry mowers. Now what do we do next? So the first thing that I'm going to do this winter is with my staff, where we have 
purchased and grown native seed. And so we'll be spreading that throughout the entire project area. The project area should be more oak woodland-ish. And what that looks like exactly will depend on the plants that come up and what takes in our seed mix. And so part of the fun is I know what this habitat is going to be, but they're just, every area has a different essence to it. So this really rare plant might pop up here that I didn't expect to, and that might inform my decisions later on down the line with the restoration. So we have a pretty good understanding based on our survey maps and our monitoring. I'm in charge of some of our monitoring programs, and all of those bits of information help us kind of modify our restoration as we continue over time. Mm -hmm. Where are you guys sourcing your seeds? So our seeds, it depends on the species. A lot of things we grow in-house at our nursery at Rollins Savannah. Um, but the more common species we'll get from vendors, and we make sure that those are sourced from within a certain provenance or just within, ideally south of us, within Illinois or Missouri. But we also accept seed from Wisconsin, just mm -hmm. to the general region. And if you want to know like specific vendors, I can share that information if you're interested. You know what, too? I was wondering, what is the seed mix? Yeah. What do you have in the, what seeds do you have? That That's a fantastic be? question. Good. And so for this seed mix in particular, I'm introducing some woodland wildflowers, um, some just general ones that I know are good for pollinators, including bee balm or wild bergamot. Um, and in this one in particular, I wanted a lot of native grasses and sedges. Yes. And the reason for that is so we can introduce a lot of fine fuels that will help us carry prescribed burn through it. Oh, interesting. Yes. And so really, I want to get this area burn ready as fast as possible so mm -hmm. we can get that management on the landscape again. Mm -hmm. Because if you have ever looked under a buckthorn canopy, it's pretty much just bare ground mm -hmm. in the buckthorn leaves. So that that's not going to burn ever. And so we really need to get the landscape back to a point when I can do that to promote native plants, balance the habitat, but mostly the soil chemistry. And the soil is what really drives this, but mm -hmm. it's the hardest to see but fire is really critical for the carbon and nitrogen cycles mm -hmm. that improve the quality of the soil. Great question. <laughs> All right, and that led into my prescribed burn as possible. So next slide, please. <laughs> All right, and so speaking of burning, I wanted to show volunteers in action at Oriole Grove. So at the very southern point, uh, you can also see in the map the green woodland area. This is where volunteers burned in April of 2023. And you can see that what's actually taking fire are dead grasses and other plants that are part of the matrix. And so this was, as I said, April 2023. And next slide, you can see about a month later, how that burn has already oh stimulated all the vegetation. Look and what this. this does is help push back the woody species. So that could be roses and, and raspberries, which are nice, but we don't want them those areas to be completely those woody plants. So that'll help with balance those out as well as stimulate our native plants. And we can be a little bit more selective in terms of the rare high quality plants that don't have as much space to grow. And also, it just it's just oh, magnificent in the spring. Ah, so take that in for another second. And next slide, please. Okay, so that's that's my goal for burning there. Um, and for the clearing project in this whole area, that's just one step of the puzzle for this beautiful mosaic that is Royal Grove. And if you look at this map that I have for you, mm -hmm. um, the red area is the entire clearing project that we have that happened this past winter. And the other habitats you'll see in green are our woodlands, and this orangish color is the prairie, and the pink are the areas that still need to be addressed. So those are mostly buckthorn and bittersweet currently. And also this, this little woodland pocket that's right here, it's still, we know this is going to be woodland because there are some nice mature oaks that remain there, mm -hmm. but we need to clear around them. And that will be a really, I expect some high quality things to pop up there after clearing, but we'll see exactly what pops up. So the, the rest of the plan, and you can go to the next slide, is to really get rid of all the pink and turn it into another color. <laughs> and so this, I'll talk a little bit more about the habitat classification. So with our GIS analyst and our other ecologists, before I came to the district, they mapped out every single habitat that we have throughout our preserves, which was 
not a small task, mm -hmm. but it's fantastic because I can show you this is exactly where the habitats lie in every preserve, and we'll be able to update this over time mm -hmm. and show exactly how many acres we've restored and changed from the unassociated woody growth, which is the nice way of saying it's buckthorn ridden, oh. to other high quality habitats. And next slide, please. So with the master plan and funding mechanisms for the initial restoration, we haven't been able to do as much as we wanted to because we've had other ongoing projects and we've needed a funding vehicle for this. So should the referendum pass on November 5th, we plan to fund all of the managed master plan project with referendum funding. And so that would entail the rest of the initial restoration. It would entail all of the site improvements. And of course, I don't have an exact timeline for you what that would be should it pass, but that is one of our planned budget for the projects, okay? And so if you want more um, information on the referendum, you can go over there, lcfpd.org slash referendum. And you can also use that little, little thing right there. Uh, next slide, please. And that was my whirlwind tour of the update of Oriole Grove. And I'm, I'm please happy to have any questions. You know, I have another question for you. Yeah. I know when you restore a vast area like this, mm -hmm. and it's filled with invasive species. Yes. Did you find any hidden gems, a tree that you couldn't believe was there? Mm -hmm. You know, like a hornbeam is a very old, slow growth tree, or the shagbark hickory. Did you find anything like that, any little surprises while you were going through? No surprise trees, but I did find wild hyacinth, if you're familiar with it. Yes. Stunning, absolutely stunning. I, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, we hadn't seen that on site before the clearing project. Right. Yeah. So that, that was one oh, that, that's beautiful. that it was like, wow, this is really nice and really indicative that it was more of a savanna woodland. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I mean when I say monitor and look for plants and see what comes up immediately after clearing. Mm -hmm. And so because that one was there, I introduced a lot more wild hyacinth seed this summer just to hopefully oh. bolster that population. So we'll see if it takes, but... I can just keep throwing seed out there until it takes. <laughs> and, you know, I could probably talk to you a long time about all of this, but the other thing I was wondering about is if you have monitors out there monitoring insects, bird life, so that over time you can show that this habitat restoration really did have an impact mm -hmm. on wildlife, not just the vegetation, but the animals and birds and insects that are coming back because you restored this. So specifically at Oriole Grove, we have... Um, I can. I have a pictures I can show you if you're interested of just different monitoring plots throughout the preserve, and that's where we do all of our vegetation monitoring. Mm -hmm. And so at those areas, we can see not only what the plant community is like, but we can also use data on prescribed burns and other management data to see how that community responds to our management. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm spearheading all of our vegetation monitoring see. initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have volunteers that are monitoring butterflies, um, birds, and I'm not as familiar with those programs. Programs, but our wildlife ecologists are. Mm -hmm. um, but what I also do is the past two years have been monitoring pollinators at those same vegetation monitoring points. Nice. And so studying how the plant community responds, how pollinators respond, and how the diversity of those relationships to respond to management. Nice. So that is quite the undertaking, but mm -hmm. we're going to learn a lot in the next few years. Mm -hmm. Great work. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Just beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful back there. I go back there all the time. Awesome. That's a really nice spot. I'm really excited for you guys to do more. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank all you. right. Thank you. All right. And then next on the agenda is another informational report. This one is an update on the downtown landscape planting plans. Um, so, Marietta, I'll actually turn it over to you. Yes, if thank take you. The reins. I know Drew and I are going to tag team on this a little bit. Do you want to do the intro? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, please. No, no. no I'm Go just going gonna, gonna to turn it over to you really quick. Okay. So, the village a couple years back um, had, to, had to do certain capital improvements in the downtown and infrastructure. And at the time said, let's really look at our downtown streetscape plan and look at if this is something that we want to do and, and 
looked at the old plan and revised it, um, going through a very public process and produced a new plan which required the relocation of the dance statue that was in front of Innovasi in the corner. So when all that work was done, we carefully stored the sculpture, but there's been the objective to let's get it back in town somewhere. And um, recently, um, the village uh, and our consultant, uh, Tesca, really uh, Jody Mariano, who is the landscape architect, an architect that worked with us on the overall downtown plan, and Marietta, representing the president of the Garden Club, um, which was the original gifter of the dance sculpture, um, we met with the artist and we walked around town and we looked at different sites and I'll let you take it from there. Okay, <laughs> very good, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, I thought what I would do is give you a little background on the Lake Bluff Garden Club and talk about how the club led to the dance sculpture and our involvement with the plan. So let me start by saying the Lake Bluff Garden Club was founded in 1917. So in May of 2025, the club will be 108 years old. And for all those years, we've always had the same objectives. Advance the knowledge and love of gardening, promote environmental awareness, and civic beautification. And what has bound club members for all those years as well as a love and pride in Lake Bluff. So we've, members have always given their time and their talent and volunteer hours. You, most recently, ECS planting the village planters four times a year and countless other little ways that we make sure that Lake Bluff looks as best as it could possibly look. The other thing that the club has done is always given donations to the village. And just to name a few, um, Washington Park, which is on the corner of Washington and Sheridan Road. The Garden Club back in 1995 took that little kind of mm, scruffy, uh, spot and turned it into a garden. So that came from the Lake Bluff Garden Club. We were also very much involved in fundraising for ash tree replacement. The Blue Star Memorial, which is right along Sheridan Road, you see that. We also put in a very small but important thing and right in front of the War Memorial, there's a, a round, it's called the Living Wreath. And the club put that in as well and the geese sculpture over by the library, just a few things. Mm. And going back even further, the garden club planted all of the trees that were in the uh, parkway on center. So a lot of those old trees were put in by the garden club. And we were also active with the design and installation of a gazebo. So given all of that history of donation and love of Lake Bluff, back in 1992, the Garden Club was celebrating its 75th anniversary, and they commissioned Margot McMahon, who is now quite a world-renowned sculptor, to create a work of art that would depict life in Lake Bluff and the feeling you would have if you came to Lake Bluff, passed through, lived here, and that's called dance sculpture. And so, um, as Drew was saying, it was installed right near Inavasi Corner, and um, changes took place. As Drew said, it's been stored, but Jody Mariano put together a beautiful landscape plan, and before we talk about the plan, let me draw your attention to the uh, slide up here, and you have that at your places as well. So this is the current situation, the current location, and again, to orient you, if you think about where the Northern Trust ATM used to be at the train station, at the metro station, there was a big turnaround put in there. Do you know where I'm talking about? This is the metro station, right? Yeah. In Lake Bluff, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. yes. So if you were to pull your car into that turnaround and look over your right shoulder, you would see a berm. It's very simple, it's got yew bushes around it, nothing much there. <laughs> So um, when Margot McMahon, we wanted to involve her in this relocation. So um, Drew, Jody, and I walked around yeah. and looked at spots 
along the bike path. I think we talked about some place on the side of Artesian Park. And when Margot saw this spot, she said, this is it. She picked that spot. And she picked it because she thought people on the train coming home, people passing through would see this beautiful representation of life in Lake Bluff. The bike path goes right across there, Sheridan Road coming and going. And what's really sweet is that if you stand at that sculpture site and look east, you see this beautiful village scape of Scranton and the green and everything else. So it's a, a lovely location. And um, Jody put the first plan together. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see what's happened, what the plan is for that spot. So what was fun about it is that Jody said, I've got a draft. And then we met with Jody at the train station. Drew and I did, and Jody it was freezing cold. It was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> so we went outside and looked around. And uh, you know, Jody's just wonderful to work with. So we had suggestions, and she was scribbling madly, and put another draft together that incorporated some of the ideas that we talked to her about. And then we showed the plan to Margot McMahon. And she, big thumbs up. She just loved it. And then as a courtesy, the Lake Bluff Garden Club was asked to weigh in on the plan. And we have a task force that specifically came. We met on site with Jody. And our garden club members had more ideas about what we could do to improve the space and um, basically just make it a little bit bigger and a little more, uh, with a little more vegetation to create kind of little zones within this area here. So um, we were thrilled and Jody put it together again and that's what you're looking at right here. And so I know that you know in your, um, I'm not sure if you have the plans listed in the handout that you have, but if you looked in the packet, you can see that I believe it's on page 29 or 30, mm -hmm. that you see all the plans, look at that. So that's just thrilling. and like we're doing throughout Lake Bluff. Same palette materials. Same palette of materials, native plants. And I was just doing a little bit of research on these plants. And let me tell you, these plants are going to be spectacular. We will have a show from early spring all the way through even past where we are right now in October. And all of these plants are drought tolerant, which is really important. They attract pollinators. They're all at different heights. And they have different bloom times, but take the wild geranium, for example. That blooms in the early spring, but the vegetation, even now, is lush and green. So you're never going to have a time when there are bald spots. There'll be times when things, you know, fly down, turn brown. There'll be beautiful fall colors. So um, it's just so exciting to, you know, it was exciting for us to be a part of it at the very beginning with the Margot McMahon sculpture, and then the Garden Club got to participate in this. But all of the credit for the design and plant selection goes to Jody Mariano. She's just fabulous. Yeah. Could you put up the plant, the, the, the final drawing? So the benches that you see are mm -hmm. the same ones that you all we put on the bike path. Exactly. Yeah. So that carries through that location. The trail. Um, this is kind of a nod to. This is crushed stone. Mm -hmm. Which is nice, you know, element through the mm -hmm. looping through. Um, seating area here. Seating area here. So looking southward, looking as you described to the village cape. Mm -hmm. um, the same light standard remains, and but it, this kind of builds a little bit of a you know intimacy for the area here. Um, Great. But it, it, it takes off from where the village's plans have gone with the downtown. Again, same pile of materials, mm -hmm. uh, seating, uh, streetscape materials, and um, the good news is there's already been a donation from a private party interested in supporting this plan mm. and I, I know there will be others so um, and I think both 
Jody and the Garden Club held the number. It's a reasonable number to yes, do this it project. Yes, it is. So I, and I think it'll, it'll get done relatively soon. So that's yes. the good news. Is there any concern about crushed stone in the wintertime and potential ice? No, we have other areas. We've maintained trails with our equipment. Okay. Not worried about it. And okay. we have crushed stone at Washington Park. And it's very easy to maintain. It's oh, yeah. not, it doesn't get icy. Right. I just mean, as a high traffic area, like I know that a lot of pedestrian activity goes through there. What I love about this is, you know, I wait for the train all the time to go downtown. Oh, that's so great to hear. For, for work. Mm -hmm. So, like, I love the fact that there are benches here that are looking at beautiful plants, beautiful flowers, mm -hmm. that you can sit and wait for the train and look at these beautiful plants as opposed to ugly train tracks and broken down fence and you know all of that other stuff that's underneath the train station so i would greatly encourage potentially more bench seating out there for more people to sit there and enjoy that space before while they're waiting for the trains mm -hmm. um i think it's awesome previous version had another bench down here mm -hmm. it really felt like it was being shoehorned in there right? what what like what's on the corner right there like that that nope down there's yeah a, there's a light here a light sander maybe another bench right there i don't know i'm not i don't want to i'm just saying the more benches around here i think would be a yes, lot yes and you know what better. you're seating here obviously right underneath yeah, here yeah but that's the ugly you're looking at the ugly train tracks and the bar, broken fences and the you know and the well i, I think in, in, in theory this could be doubled mm -hmm. this is really an issue i mean i think I don't know if you guys are looking for two cents. I'm just sharing mine. You know what? <laughs> and here's another way to think about that is, you know, like any project, any plan, you plan, you execute, and then you see what it feels like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we put all of this in and say, boy, now that I'm here and I'm sitting here, I'm waiting for the train, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great if we had this? Or wouldn't it be great if we did something else? And then you get into another planning, another whole discussion. Mm -hmm. And then you get other people involved and decide, make decisions based on your experience on site with these plants coming up all around you. I can tell. And that's what the village did with the downtown streetscape and the ABR purposely went slow. And I think it got, some people got frustrated by it. It's like, yes. why are we waiting? It's been two years. Are we going to put seating? Are we gonna? Mm -hmm. They said, let's let it. And then what's been placed has gotten enormous support. What's down there now, and yes. the, the grasses, you know, and all these native plants. Mm -hmm. and people just love it. So, mm -hmm. You know, the other thing I want to point out about this plan, which is really nice, speaking of where the bench is and screening, what we added in the final draft was there are taller grasses behind that bench. So it's a little bit of a sound buffer, definitely a screen. And then you see two circles there. So those are service berries. They're a beautiful native shrub. They can get very tall. And they, they create kind of a veiled look because the, the branching is beautiful, but it's not too thick. Mm -hmm. So that's lovely. And then the other plant I'll draw your attention to is in the quarter, it's standing all by itself up there. Yes, that's called a spice bush. Mm. And that is the only food source for the spice bush swallowtail butterfly. Mm. And that is a gorgeous, gorgeous shrub because now is when it starts to change to its fall colors. And those leaves hang on, they'll be there. Once we get that planted, I have some at home. Mm. They're gonna last for um, another month. So. I, I don't know, we could talk about this forever and the plants yeah, that are good. chosen, but <laughs> man, oh man, it's really exciting. Yeah. I see the donor plaque. Um, do we have any other educational signage planned, like to explain some of these plants to people? That. Yeah. I think that would be, let's, practically speaking, and I, I have no reason to doubt this planting, but what you want to do is plant the plants and let them grow for a while. Sure and see how they do. And then after you do that, and you know, these are the plants, then you would put some kind of signage there. But what really might be fun is to organize little tours mm -hmm. of this spot at different times of the year. And then you get to talk about specific plants because there aren't too many. There's just a nice uh, distribution, as I said, drought tolerant, different bloom times. 
seasonal interest year round. Then you have, you know, uh, grade school, middle school, mm -hmm. high school kids that want to take photographs or draw or study, you know, uh, the plants and the pollinators and everything else that it's going to attract. So it's a mini, mini uh, version of what's happening over in Oreo Grove. <laughs> You're going to watch things grow. <laughs> we didn't have the burden of... Full circle. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> We didn't have the burden of removing invasives. We get to start, you know, with a clean slate. But it's the same thing about taking a spot that really wasn't doing much for the environment mm -hmm. and turning it into something that's environmentally friendly, educational, great habitat. And then, you know, it's becoming kind of a signature of Lake Bluff yeah. to have this downtown area filled mm -hmm. with native plants. So signage is a cool idea, which we could do, but I really love the hands-on you know, touch the flowers, smell the flowers, mm -hmm. see how it looks at different times of day. And that's when it really gets into the hearts and minds of people, which I think is the long-term goal. Yeah. I mean, I, for one, as a citizen of Lake Bluff, would love to know just what those plants are so that I can bring them into my own garden. Right. That's right. What I was thinking while you're waiting for the train, you go, oh, my God, what is that? And that's a, a beautiful little, bush. I'm going to go online and it. order it right now. Yes, yeah. that's QR a great code. idea. Yeah. And yeah. I know yeah. Mike is holding up. There's a, uh, an app called... Um, Picture this. Yes, yeah. I have that as well. And that's just fabulous. That's a subscription though, right? No, it's not. Is it free? Yeah, well, you just have to find the secret little that cancel button yeah, in the corner. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> okay. Changer. <laughs> yes. So I, I highly recommend that one. So, but yes, there's all kinds of, I mean, just this conversation now is sparking ideas of what would make this, play, this spot even more meaningful. And the nice thing is these are the same plants that are being used downtown. And then you can get in. So more opportunity to learn about native plants and all their benefits. You can then hit the camera and take a picture of it and it'll identify it. What's, what's the time that's frame cool. on this? I think I installed well, it. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I have well, um, you don't based have on to, funding, every time based on funding we get budgeted, um, but I think I, if there's more and I think there will, we'll, we'll see, kind of do a call if there's, if there's anybody interested looking to donate to make this happen. I suspect it'll get funded pretty quickly. So next up, we did um, Architectural Board of Review. That's done. Yep. SEC. Final, and final. And then comes... Budget final. season. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's missing in terms of the downtown streetscape is block two, and that's really, you know, Walnut Center, East, that's mm -hmm. done, all that, and now it's just that segment of block one and then to the train station. So block, block one, one is the brewery? That's in the front of the brewery. So okay. that still has the oh, old yes. streetscape program. We've applied for an ITEP grant to get that redone to match all this. Into the one way that we reviewed before with it's the two way. Oh, it will the be. Ultimate plan will be two way, but it has the the, the expanded um, streetscape or and whatever. the curbless yeah. street so things flow and it oh, has yeah, these yeah. plantings and has the seat walls and the same mm -hmm. pots and it'll be you know very attractive to match what's here and um, the ITAP grant is um, we're crossing our fingers but the board has been talking you know this is the second grant program we've applied to I think they're going to get to the point where they decide if they want to fund it by other means um, if we just keep coming up short with grant Program, mm -hmm. so. So, but this project is separate, separate. from that. From and from a price point, much much more achievable. Yeah, I mean the block one's a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is just going to follow this progression of. Yeah. There, here, village board, and then. Yep. Place out for bids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. That's amazing. Thank you for all your work. Yeah. yeah. Thank to the Garden Club too. I know those. Oh, you're very welcome. But I can't say enough about, you know, the village Jody. support and Jody Murray. Yeah. Those yeah. benches are going to fill up fast. Yes, they are. <laughs> they will yes, be sleep. prime yes, seating for waiting for the train. I, I can I guarantee it. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Next up is the village staff report. Anything? Uh, yes. So as the SEC may remember, we had um, some folks from Hefty and Swalco come to talk to us about a new hard to recycle plastics program here at the village. Yes. I know. I saw the container at Public yes. Works. Oh, so my gosh. We're so excited about that. It's officially <laughs> October. I the know. The program has launched. We had Walter Willis from Swalco speak 
at the last village board meeting yesterday. Um, but we just wanted to let you know that the village now has starter kits at Village Hall for uh, residents to pick up. They come with a orange bag and a, a little fact sheet to help everyone get started. We've also started to advertise the program in the village newsletter and on the website. So if anybody has any questions um, on that to please feel free to reach out. Um, and then just as a reminder, this is a uh, drop-off program, not right. curbside. So we have uh, Jake uh, over at Public Works has been very nice to put uh, signs leading to the appropriate uh, drop-off area. Great. Any, uh, does Groot, any plans, does Groot know about this? Any plans to incorporate this into curbside? They or? do know about it. I think it's the intention that they will in the future, um, but as of right now, they don't have nothing in the works but hopefully if it takes off they want to get their infrastructure isn't set up for this right now but they're looking at it and they, and they want to do it yeah and where are we at in the contract structure uh when's the next deadline i, I think we have a little bit of time there's yeah some, uh, yeah there's some a couple years extension. right yes yeah okay yeah, yeah. all right um but yes that that is our village staff you know what i have a question going back to our uh dance sculpture site do we need to vote on whether this SEC? It was really an informational report. I gotcha. Okay. Good. Approved. <laughs> good. Information. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, I suppose the only other news I would share is uh, David Graff has recently retired after yes. 50 years mm -hmm. of public service mm -hmm. over at the Lake Bluff Fire Department. Um, so we honored him at the Village Board meeting last night. And Greg Marsh is the new uh, fire mm -hmm. chief. Very nice. Yes. Clara had her baby. Yes, right? Clara yes. had her baby. Baby Callum. She did. Oh, how wonderful. Baby Callum's adorable. And yeah. um, <laughs> she should be uh, coming back uh, next oh, month. Oh, wow. Yeah, and as part of that, uh, when uh, we'll return back to the lighting ordinance discussions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to ask about leaf blower discussions mm -hmm. because we've done our second year, we're in the two year zone. And so I'm not sure when we start to talk about that again. Dropping at the, the hammer. End of the calendar year. <laughs> so and our calendar year yeah. ends at the end of December. Yeah. So in in the new year, we'll yep. start talking about yep. that. Okay. okay. Good to know. Um, so members' reports. Anything anyone wants to bring up? Topics or? I have a I have a couple things I want to talk about. Um, my wife, as some of you might know, was the manager of the farmers market. Uh, for the village this no, year, no, and I did not know this beforehand, but you know the village has that table of informational, whatever we're handing out bags and stuff like that. And I thought it might be a good idea for this committee to try and put together monthly top talking points about sustainability efforts oh. and a flyer that we could potentially just have there to hand out to people who might be interested in things like the new recycling program or becoming a bird city or the dark skies initiative, just something to help us spread the word, get the word on the street about all the things that we're doing. So I know that the farmer's market season is now over, but something that as we gear up for the next season, um, potentially we look at a calendar throughout the farmer's market season and say this month, we're going to talk about this and get together six types of, fly informational documents that might we could just have held there for people who might be curious about the efforts that the village might be doing in terms of sustainability and community enhancement i love that idea how would we how would we enact that uh i mean we would need printing we would need a designer i could do content as long as we had our talking points straight mm -hmm. um i don't think the designing would be too difficult if we have a canva account mm -hmm which I think the village, the village yeah so I don't think it would be too difficult but I think it would be if we could January February look at the calendar see what's coming up look at the initiatives that we have for the months coming up and uh -huh. say okay let's get all of these documents together by March so that everything is finalized by March and then we say we get them filled out we get them approved if, by the village if that needs to happen yeah, I think it, you know, I don't want to say an act of Congress, but I'll, I'll say historically the Farmers Market Committee has kind of Poo -poo locked, locked the door, sealed it, 
encased it in steel, welded it shut in terms of, you know, the market is the market and that's the market's area. And they have resisted any sort of any even village initiative, you know, like that's question that's informational, whether it be mm -hmm. um, information about the stormwater management program or even the downtown streetscape program. We went through that that. Uh, right. You couldn't have the fire department talking to kids <laughs> about safety. In an official the market booth. is the market and that 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 is it's you know it's one of the things that is is it has been extremely successful it's the only market that's ever been identified as one of the finest in chicago so that was not in chicago right it's like it's it's a fantastic pro, you know continuous program here for 30 plus years the the so they the they have really been um resistant to having the village anything village cross that imaginary line into the market. Now, that doesn't mean that the, with the way we've handled that is like other information providers, we line up, you know, get on the corner there, the Navasi corner, and we have tables, and that's the way it's always been done. Yeah. And it's an immense amount of foot traffic. It, it, it yeah. you know, it, it achieves the goals of getting exposure, and it keeps the storefront, the storefront, you step outside on the street corner, and that's where you get the information. So there's different ways to, to achieve that, but just within the market, I think would be extreme, despite your in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah, it, yeah I mean, I think that's, I think the farmer's market is a great way to really help spread the word about that. You know, uh, the newsletter kind of only goes so far and, and the village website only goes so far, but when you get people talking about things then they have more conversations yeah. and more conversations. Well, people. that Innovasi corner, mm -hmm. uh, we, the garden club had an oak sapling sale. Mm. And it was a big success mm -hmm. because of the foot traffic. It's a hot corner. And yeah. it's Friday, and people are in a happy mood because they just got some wonderful things at the market. Mm -hmm. And they stroll by, and you have a chance. If you have a table and a, a banner. Now, is that spot first come, first serve? It is. Yes. Okay, so you would need to get out there. We would need to get out there and be seated and be manned and have... But don't individuals we, from this committee we or, are assigned you can ask for certain dates right yes you can ask for certain dates but in terms of which groups want to come on which date generally we tell uh, everyone it's first come first serve no. um on, and on the day the, of or on the day of. village so usually committee there can be about you know to four to five the needs of the village <laughs> not the other way around want to have a table and have then we just kind of say hey you know you've been approved but when, on the yeah. day of, you have, but like, when you have this a area, village but if that area is full, please move over by the post office Okay. Well, like she's Ooh, not. Ooh, post office. All right. Yeah. That would be a tough to corner. To to. Yeah. But I know that with a change of sort of well, on-site leadership pretty, might come. Well, you know, I, I don't know how much time we want to take during this meeting yes. to talk about that. But Generally, we have the other thing I wanted to bring up, the split rail fence by the train station right where the location of the dancing mm -hmm. statue is right yep. there the posts knocked over they've rotted out it looks like they're just falling down and we can fix that yeah no, i just wanted to bring that up because and especially like the bushes there are dead yeah it's pretty ugly the stuff that is there is wildly overgrown you're Maybe. talking about on the other side of that fence yeah. that, that before you go fence. down to the sidewalk yeah. I just walked past it today, and the split row fence, two of the posts are down. It's just laying on the ground. It's all That spot's got a up. lot of potential. A lot of potential and needs a lot of love and work. But, yeah. So it Steve would be Slope awesome. has been, we've looked at that, and we've talked about putting, like, different, like, pollinators along the slope. Sure. Yeah. We've, we've talked about doing that. Needs, something needs to happen. We used to have evergreens there that... Mm -hmm. There might be one left, but it, it, it needs some. They all died. Right? There's yeah. an old uh, crab tree there that's. There's just, it needs some attention. Agreed. I mean. But I got a couple ideas about what we could do with that. <laughs> Let's hear them. <laughs> well, you know, Sounds there like is where project. Margaret McMahon's going to be. Yes. Her statue. And then there's the sidewalk and there's their, you know. The rail. Yeah. Lapidated. Yeah. Split rail fence. And then there's kind of a flat area before it goes down. Yes. And, you know, the service berries and the spice bush that I talked about, those are great bushes. They get very, 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 very big. Mm -hmm. And they're beautiful, just beautiful, even when they have no leaves on them. They're beautiful. So that spot is just the right amount of sun. Mm -hmm. These, these uh, shrubs are very uh, drought tolerant. Yeah. And um, they're I mean, kind of fast growing. They're fun like to that, watch. Yeah. They're fun to watch. And service berries have... Uh, beautiful fall color they have food 
I wonder if that could, the, at least that edge could potentially be incorporated into. The well, that might that be a phase on. two. You know, phase everything two. comes down to money because we can always dream up all these fantastic yeah, yeah. things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, uh, you know, finding, buying. It's just a planting. bummer walking from the train in there and you see this fence and that's, that's dead bushes. Fiction. We have those materials at trees. House. We can yeah. Use it. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And that's then, all I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Chair report, it just reminds me as we talk about the train station, what's the status of the bike racks upgrades at the station? I'll have to check with Jeff on that. Budgeting season's coming up, and I yeah. know that um, you know with the beautification, we really want to encourage people to bike, and I know a lot of people, it's an old story, have had bikes stolen, and I don't bike there anymore because I have my bike stolen, and it's not easy to lock at these old rusty things. So hopefully bring that up get that into the funding for next year is my recommendation. Um, we're working on some lighting around town. We're working on trying to improve the current situation at the public library uh, with light pollution. And that's all I've got. Oh, um, what is this? Uh, we're currently looking for student. We have two applicants. Okay. Waiting a third. Okay. And, but somebody probably next month. Oh, Wait. to join a committee. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Because I was thinking about, in terms of the, you brought out the farmer's market, they could put together the board for this with all the samples of the wrappers on a big, you know, there's projects like that we could ask the Eco Club and the student-led mm -hmm. yes. group to help us with. I had a conversation with the natural science teacher over there who was a woman, who Candace Davenport, who I went to high school with. She's involved in the search. And we discussed potentially having their classes do um, sort of project or reports about some of the initiatives that we're putting forward. Great, that'd be perfect for the farmer's market too. Yeah. So. Great, okay. I don't know if that's going to happen, but okay. we've, we've been talking about well, it. We have some time. Forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting in the curriculum, it's not easy, right? Squeezing that kind of stuff in. Yeah, easy. yeah, definitely. Okay. Or trying to do extra credit projects or whatever, I don't know. All right, that's all I have. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good meeting. Good meeting. Thank you guys. Great people. Yeah. Yeah.